Hello electric football coaches. Well, let us uh, begin right where we left off from part one. I have my uh, cancer ribbon logo downsized to right where I want it to. Uh, one tip I should get right off here is uh, most people's inclination is uh, when they're first using the workspace is to place your uh, work right along the page border to uh, maximize the deco material. But when you go to print it, you may very well find to your dismay that your artwork will be cut off along extreme edges of the border. If you want to check exactly what your uh, print window is, uh, you can create a box like I'm doing here using the Create Rectangular and Square tool. You place the one inch square into one corner of the uh, page outline. Here I'm changing the opacity in the bottom left uh, corner is where it's done. Uh, this is just to use as less ink for this uh, simple test. Then I'm going to make a duplicate of this square and uh, simply transfer it over to the uh, opposite side. Uh, corner of the uh, page border and then you can uh, zoom in just to get it uh, lined a little bit better with the actual uh, edge of the page then uh, print this page out some scrap paper and it uh, should uh, tell you where your printing border is determined I'm not sure if this Inkscape printer interface varies from brand to brand but I know with my own that uh, it tends to cut off more of the top of my landscape uh, page than uh, anywhere on the sides or on the bottom uh, nothing more frustrating than to go to print your artwork and then have it uh, cut off in a sixteenth of an inch. I think if you stay uh, way a half inch from the edge of the border, you should be safe anyways. Okay, uh, now we need to uh, impose our logo onto a colored background that will be matching our helmet color. Uh, for this particular helmet cover, I'm going to pick black because I think it contrasts well with a pink ribbon. So I put the opacity back at 100 and created the uh, long uh, black rectangle. And if you want access to all the different color uh, colors available in uh, Inkscape, just the bottom right hand uh, corner uh, arrow there you can click on. So let's zoom in a little closer to our work so we can see what we're doing here. Now if we take our single uh, logo here and try and paste it on this uh, back background, it'll actually be underneath the uh, background. So to prevent that, we're just going to duplicate it here and move it over. Uh, there's another way of going around about this using layers, but that's just a more complication that we don't actually need here. I'm going to zoom out here and get a larger uh, field of view. And now the intention is to extend that back uh, band here uh, across the uh, full width of the, uh, the page here. The idea here with this decal is to be able to cut around our logo without having to precisely cut around the ribbon, which would be very difficult to do, and then uh, blend it in with the black of the helmet with paint. This is one of the limitations or obstacles in not being able to print with white ink presents and this is a workaround method. Our next task is to uh, create multiple copies of our logo and to do that we select edit from the top menu here, go down to clones and then over to and click on tile clones. Within this created tile clones uh, toolbox uh, here in these two windows you can set how many rows and columns uh, you want of the, your particular image that you've selected. And then we click on create and here's an example of what you get. So I'll zoom out here slightly so we get a better look at what we achieved just to one click. And we'll have uh, five uh, rows of 18 columns of, uh, of copies of exact copies of our original logo. And to remove our recently created uh, tile clones just requires one click we're back to our original. Within this created tile clones uh, toolbox is several settings and the shift setting here this has all to do with uh, the spacing and offset between the clone images. Now there's countless combinations here but if you set it up as you see on screen as I set it uh, you'll have a ballpark uh, setting that will work very well. As for these other settings in this toolbox uh, you don't really have to concern yourself too much with it. It's the shift one that's the important one to be set properly. So getting back to our lone logo here, first thing we're going to do is select it and then over in the rows and column here we're going to select one row and just based on experience I'm going to take a rough guess of, uh, we'll put in 60 here and then we'll go to create and we'll pan over here and see where we are. Oh we missed it by four. So we're going to go up, remove it, adjust our amount decrease it by four go to create 
And there we go. We got our first line of uh, logos for our helmet. 56. So we do 28 uh, individual players. Here's another Inkscape tip. Let's say you want to go undo uh, several steps back. You can do that by clicking on Edit. Go to Undo History. And here's a listing of all the uh, moves I did in this particular video. I can click on any one of these and it'll take me back to uh, that point of time uh, my work. Saves you having to click on undo, undo, undo several times just to get back several steps. So let's get rid of this uh, toolbox uh, menu. And now we got our single line of uh, logos here. So what if we want to do, uh, duplicate this? Well, it's pretty easy. Just click, hold down the mouse button, create a box that surrounds your complete work, go down to duplicate. And voila, we got another line of uh, logos. We went from 56 logos to 112, just like that. Now often, depending on the logo design, of course, you may require a left and right-handed uh, logos for the opposing size of the helmet. So with your duplicate, you click on Flip Objects Horizonly uh, on the tool manual in the upper corner here. And there you go ready to clone images of both opposing sides of the helmet. So here's another presented dilemma. Uh, maybe you have a logo you cannot find without a transparent background. Uh, JPEG images, for instance, don't support a transparent background. So we need to eliminate that uh, background color, whatever color it is. And while it's possible to do that in Inkscape, uh, that requires you to trace around uh, image portions that you wish to retain and eliminate the outside area of the trace. Now, if it's a simple design, that's okay, but if it's an intricate design, yeah, that's a rather tedious, time-consuming process. So instead, we're going to venture outside uh, Inkscape and go to this website, PixLR, which is an online photo editor. It's uh, not a program that you will need to download and install on your computer either. I'll provide a link in the show notes below. Uh, first thing you want to do is click on Open Image from Computer and find and open your image that you want to work with. So I'm going to recenter this on the screen just so we can see it a little better here. Our first order of business is to click on and acquire the wand tool within the tool menu and then bring it over to your image and click anywhere within the outer white uh, background area. Next step is to go over to the edit uh, drop down menu and in the choices here we select invert selection. You will see every action that you take is briefly reflected in the middle of the image itself. You return to the uh, edit menu and this time we select copy. And then for a third time we go to the edit menu and this time we select paste. Now we want to cross over the workspace, go to the right side and uh, place your mouse pointer over layers uh, on the uh, lock symbol adjacent to the background and what you want to do is double click it to unlock it and then you want to remove the check mark in the adjacent box. Now we've acquired a transparent background at least in the outer boundary area but as you can notice there's still this uh, inner white area present. We'll be eliminating that shortly though. But before we can do that, uh, first we have to go over to File, uh, select Save. And here within this next pop-up window, you want to go to Format. And under the listings here, you want to select as the best quality, uh, PNG format. And then we go and click on OK. And then you finally save it to an, uh, the location on your computer where you know you can find it again. So our final step for achieving a fully uh, transparent background is to reload uh, the uh, image that you just previously saved. And again, we go over to the wand tool to select. Go over to the white area that you want to eliminate, click on it, and then simply hit delete on your keyboard. And there we have a finally uh, fully achieved a transparent background to our original image.
you will want to save it for a final time. Uh, you can give the uh, name of the file any name you want. I'll just put in final here. If I could spell final, that is. And once again, you want to ensure that you're saving it under the PNG format, which is the best quality. So return to Inkscape and our project. Uh, we're going to import the image that we just modified in PixLR. And here I had increased the size of the original just for display purposes, so I'm going to do the same with this uh, newest image. And I can shuffle the original off to the side and put the new one in place. So now you can see we have an image that we can work with the background color with uh, much better. This whole process to achieve a transparent background actually takes longer to describe than actually do. And it should come in handy for those images you just can't find a transparent background for. So now I've come to the final uh, subject that I'm going to be covering in part two of uh, do-it-yourself uh, miniature football decal making. And that is another item we're going to need in our arsenal to make our own decals, and that's uh, fonts. Unfortunately, there's not a website that offers all the fonts for the pro and college teams, at least that I'm not aware of and come across. They uh, tend to be scattered across the web. However, I thought for the benefit of this tutorial and my subscribers and viewers, I uh, decided to gather all the uh, fonts that I've acquired in my searches and uh, place them into one folder. My intentions are to upload this folder onto the uh, Google Drive file sharing application. Uh, that's the same uh, Google Drive where my uh, field cover templates are located. If you happen to view my previous uh, field cover tutorial, you may be familiar with that. So let's open up this folder and just have a quick look-see. And as you can see, there's quite a number of fonts in here. Um, not all 32 pro teams are presented here. Uh, fortunately, uh, a lot of the teams use similar fonts, so you can uh, use a common font for several different teams. There are also some throwback uh, old style type of fonts in here too. I'm going to open up a few uh, random fonts here. Uh, they are all of a one click install. And where these actually get installed into is your Windows uh, font folder. Uh, Inkscape doesn't have its own uh, self contained uh, font folder, uh, but it utilizes the operating system's uh, font folder or library. Actually, I believe uh, most, if not all, graphics programs and word processing programs do the same thing. You will find, for example, the most common college type of font is uh, filed under the NFL Varsity. Uh, as well, you may have noticed there are a lot of other sports fonts in here. Uh, NBA, MLB, NHL as well. There are several reasons why I did this. I had another coach in the league I participated in, the Calgary Electric Football League asked me to do decals for the Calgary Flames of the NHL. I also intend to do my own table hockey uh, project sometime down the road with 3D players. But I also thought it would come in handy to have access to other sports fonts, and you may too. Uh, just as an example, the Ottawa Red Blacks that I displayed in part one of this tutorial, they have a rather unique uh, font style that I was unable to find amongst the, all the football fonts I had. But I was able to find a close match with an NHL font. Uh, where you might find this helpful is uh, if say you're doing decals for your local high school team and they have a unique font or perhaps you want to do an XFL or a World Football League uh, team. And finally where there's uh, really an advantage for these extra fonts is with you guys doing your uh, fantasy football teams uh, and leagues. In that case of course your font choice is uh, wide open. Now I don't claim this is going to be a comprehensive font library, but uh, I think it may save some of you guys uh, some time and uh, legwork uh, trying to track down your own fonts. And of course you don't have to install all these fonts, you can go through them and nitpick and uh, select which what ones you want to install and uh, delete the rest type of thing. And finally I'm not going to have this uh, link for this font uh, download uh, right away as soon as I have the uh, video uploaded. I'm going to go through it in the next couple of days and update it and uh, make sure it's uh, in good shape. Uh, I just came up with this idea uh, towards the end of doing this tutorial so uh, give me a few days and I'll have it up for you. 
So in part three, we'll continue with utilizing the fonts as we create uh, jersey numbers and names on the back of the jersey. And we'll get into uniform color matching. And then we'll cover the other topics as I close in on concluding the do-it-yourself decal making tutorial for your football teams. Thanks for watching as my kicker hits the crossbar. That bum's getting cut the next day.